Welcome, folks. This is the SAK Show brought to you by Mac Coffee on Zindagi TV. As always, a big shout out to Royal Orchid Azure, Bollywood Casino, and the Wet Lounge. Not forgetting Mac Coffee Power You Now. Today's guest, folks, I'm telling you, keeps getting better and better. Yeah. So, I tell me, I mean, it's been amazing. I've known you from the time I had my hair, man. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's been a great journey over here. And I've been following you on social media and everything. But let, let's share with our viewers, who exactly is Arif Welji? Well, Arif Welji, uh, I started off here in Nairobi. That's when we knew each other yes. and everything. Yes. Um, started doing shows here. Uh, I was actually, I have to say, I was the first guy to actually start all those fashion shows mm. and stuff like the that. The pioneer, yeah. The pioneer <laughs> for that. Yeah. And then um, I remember I had a opportunity to do a movie by Rajkumar Kohli. Yeah. So he had come down and seen me here. Uh -huh. And he had given me the rights to, you know, get him all the uh, uh, backup dancers and uh, do the hair and the whole stuff. Yeah. But uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know how can you say, I would say fortunately. <laughs> fortunately, I got my visas to go to Canada. Uh -huh. So I unfortunate just, for us, fortunate <laughs> for him. Yeah. But I still come here. <laughs> okay. So and I'm still a Kenyan. Yeah. So what happened is that I made a move, mm -hmm. and I went off to Vancouver, uh, Canada. And uh, I have to say it was a very tough start. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have everything, you, you set yourself. And I was just at the time I just set myself. Just when you about yes, to hit it, big. about to hit it big. I moved. And you have to start all over. I again. I had to start all over oh. again. So it's like you're here, and then you go yeah, down here. Yeah. But Canada has been good to me. Mm -hmm. Canada has been good for me, rather. It's been really good. So yeah. tell me, who exactly are you in terms of, you do what, choreography, you do acting, a hairstylist, I mean, jack of all <laughs> trades, fashion, so much happening. I mean, I love your new hairstyle as well. Thanks. I mean, I'm in Kenya, so you have to every do Every time good. I see you is with a, every week, I can say, if not every day, there's a new hairstyle. This guy changes his hairstyle like change of boxes, guys, yeah. seriously. Yeah. You know, when you're in the industry, honestly, mm. um, SAK, I've noticed that you have to have to keep up with the Jones. True. In Canada, I went back into school. Yeah. I started schooling and I started, uh, did my fashion degree. I did my film, uh, introduction to film and uh, acting and all that. Mm -hmm. And of course, I pursued hairstyling as well, oh. <clears throat> which took me, uh, when you get into the hair industry, and it's the same as getting a hair, fashion, all this is goes hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So from there, I started making my contacts. I had a local designer who was a big name there at that time. And uh, he asked me to choreograph one of his shows. Oh. So that's how it all started. And then from there, I started doing shows. I started anchoring. I was in, um, I did a lot of, uh, uh, what you may call, uh, social network uh, stuff and all yeah, that. Yeah. Worked with uh, a couple of channels yeah. and on hair and fashion trends and, and stuff fashion, like that. Yeah. Uh, so I was a regular on, on okay. Channel M and stuff like that. And then, yeah, so from there it just started booming up and it's just making great, context, great. yeah. So even before we go into the further details of that, going to Canada, mm -hmm. meaning what you had done in Kenya, was it sufficient or you had to do, redo everything? Uh, it was sufficient. Was I it recognized as such? Uh, or well, in the beginning, no. Yeah. yeah, so that's what happens. A anything good. you do yeah. when you go into North America and stuff like that. Yeah. So going back there, I had to pick myself up. Mm -hmm. I had to start doing everything, so which was a, a very big challenge. Because mm -hmm. you know, when you are sat here in Kenya, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're and sat. You had a foundation. You and have a foundation, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you go there, nobody knows you. Yeah. And tell me, there, it's like every other person is a head stylist and a fashionist. Oh. I mean, you know, there'll be in Kenya, we'll have maybe one or two Arifs, but there we have like a million Arifs there. Which is, <laughs> and you know what? And, and you know what? I have to say, competition is healthy. Yeah. If you don't have competition, you will never work yourself yeah. to get yeah. better. Yeah. And this is what I found here because mm. there was no competition here. Mm. I mean, it was just Arif at that time, mm. right? Mm. And uh, going there, there was uh, who, who is Arif. Mm. But I have to say, I was fortunate as far as my hairdressing field was because a lot of people from here have moved to Canada. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So networking from there and then they tell other people yeah. about you. Yeah. And it's, you know, our community, yeah. I yeah. have to say, is a solid foundation. Uh -huh. 
and they tell one ten people, and you know, people start wondering who Just you are. Word of so, word, yeah, word express, of word, yeah, word of word. Okay, so tell choreography. Yes. Uh, you you're a fashion uh, icon as such, and you do you style people. Mm -hmm. You 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 do their hair. You do you do makeup as well. I do makeup, but I do makeup for my shows. For your shows, shows only. Yeah. Okay, so let's speak about your shows now. Yeah. How is it putting up a whole? I believe you're an actor as well. And tell me about one of your most uh, amazing experience of a show that you've put together. Uh, I have to say it has been a um, couple of them. One was for the uh, Winter Games Olympics when they yeah. called me up and they asked me to represent their communities mm -hmm. and the Indian community as well. So that was one. The other one was I did a big, huge event for uh, at the GM place at that time. It was yeah. 28,000 people. Mm -hmm. It was a whole huge floor show with nine, uh, 900 people. Mm -hmm. and that was a big, big task to you know put 900 participants together, together and to do a yeah, full-fledged yeah. show on the floor. Yeah, yeah. That was there. And my best achievement, I would say, is the one I just did very recently. Mm -hmm. It's called Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And the Odyssey, what I did was I pushed the boundaries and I started, I'm, I've been getting better as I would say. Mm -hmm. So what I do is now I do a theatrical performance, okay. right? And even singing wise and everything, yeah. we yeah, we, sit, uh, we seek the local talent yeah. and then we train them. Wow. We train them as far as singing, they, uh, they have to be singers though, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. singing, uh, music, uh, dancing, the whole full show is just like what you see in Bollywood yeah, right now, yeah, yeah. is what we've started doing there. And I have an excellent team, I have an excellent partner, she's Farah, mm -hmm. Farah Qasim, and then I have, uh, we formed a team which is called uh, a Dream Team. Dream Team. Yeah, huh? so I'm an nice. excellent team nice. I have to say right now. You mentioned Bollywood, well, yes. how's your Bollywood experience? Ah, Bollywood, as we all know, is very iffy. It's very big, it's very <laughs> ugly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it is very ugly. Very tricky. <laughs> very tricky, yeah. but very fulfilling, yeah. fulfilling as mm -hmm. well, I have to say. Yeah. Working with, um, no names given, but working with actors and working mm. with singers, mm. I find that the singers are much more humble mm -hmm. uh, compared to actors. Right. Actors, yeah. I find that they have an attitude. Mm -hmm. And um, I always tell my team, I always tell people that to work with celebrities, mm -hmm. you have to ignore that they are celebrities. Celebrities, you have to treat them like normal people to achieve your results. Uh, yeah, as you yeah. notice, we did yeah. one show together, SAK here, yeah. and there was an uh, actor who had come down yeah. from yeah. Uh, India. India, Mumbai. Uh, Mumbai, yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> mm. and, no uh, names given. No <laughs> names given. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the best way to get that attention was to, you know, we have to realize we are celebrities too. Mm -hmm. It's just that they are behind cameras. Yeah, we're with people. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. And, <laughs> and it's us who makes anyway. them. You make them, exactly. No, You're the one who makes to make them look good yes. and all that stuff. So, yes. yeah, I get that. And then, in terms of uh, what is more, uh, if you have to rate, what, what is more personal to you? Hairstyling, choreography, acting? Um, you know, SAK, after a certain age I got, I thought I was going to retire from hairstyling. Mm -hmm. I actually thought I was. And then he just came up with a new hairstyle. <laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> but I forget, at, I forgot at that time that that is what my foundation was. Mm -hmm. And because of that foundation, I got into the fashion, into the acting. It, it's just a whole industry. Yeah. So I have to say, I'm, I, I'm passionate about hairstyling. Hairstyling, yes. so that one tops your list. That tops my list. Um, putting up shows, yeah. uh, doing theatrical shows and you know yeah. musical shows yeah. is awesome and you know SAK to do shows down in Canada to be having a show going on for two three days and having it packed okay. the best task, yeah. the best fulfilling thing is that when you when you get a standing ovation yeah. and I have always got a standing yeah, ovation good. awesome so you know it's generally people last in it like five ten years but you've lasted in it 20 years 20, plus 20 years plus <laughs> how have you managed to be so consistent <laughs> You know, this is an industry we all know, even in the movie, even in um, any any of this fashion industry, mm -hmm. you are just what you are last. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You have to keep up with it. I have to keep up with what's new out there. I mm -hmm. always go for my training. I always go for upgrading. I'm always traveling. I come here. Where, whenever I come here, I go to Asia. I go to wherever I am. Yeah. I am learning. Learning. I am Every day is a learning thing. Every day is a learning thing. Yeah. As far as styling goes, as far as designing goes, you look at people. Yeah. You, it's not just what you create, but you take that as an um, 
inspiration for you. Inspiration. You see, you see people on the streets when you when you're traveling anywhere in the world. You're learning in this profession. Mm. You're learning. You're watching, mm. and you make it and you own it. So you make it your own, and that's what's kept me going. And as we've all noticed that, um, as we age. I find that people tend not to look after themselves. Yeah, yeah. Even in whatever industry you are, you get comfortable and yeah. you say, okay, you know what, I made That's it big, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're but content with what you have. Every time there's yeah. somebody coming out from the mm. yin yang. So you have competition, mm -hmm. which is healthy. Mm -hmm. Which is healthy. Good stuff, guys. Keep watching. It's Arif Welji talking about his 20 years plus experience on the SAK show. We meet after this. Kenya is where you all started this thing and now tell me what, what's the experience been like is there how do you compare Kenya then 20 and, years ago to now? now um has it grown I have my personal views on that I have oh, to yeah. say no, you can share them don't um I, these views loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well I was just mentioning to my nephew I yeah. said we're just going through as far as the infrastructure we have moved very well mm -hmm. but yet 20, 25 years ago, what Nairobi was, it was, uh, it was so different. Mm -hmm. I see it more getting crowded and crowded, mm -hmm. which is good, yeah. which is good and which is bad, of course. Okay. We, it has the uh, on and offs. Um, Kenya has progressed quite a bit, I have and, to and, say. and in terms of fashion and in terms of your field, My when you were here those days and yes. when you come back now, you're like, um, am I glad that I left? Yeah, I would say I'm glad I left. I'm glad I left because I grew up more as a person there. Yeah. I have learned a lot. As uh, we know here, and I'm not sure now, but uh, at that time when you leave school, that means you've left school. Yeah. Your education yeah, is yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, true. You go to Canada, yeah. you go to America, everywhere. doesn't matter how old you are. You'd mm -hmm. be able to go to universities. You're going able to study. Here, we don't have the there's opportunity. No, there's no opportunity for a massive growth here. Yeah. There's no opportunity yeah. for massive yeah. growth. So Arif, you know, I know a couple of people who, who used to be under you, used to train them, used to teach them, and now they've made it somehow as such. And what, what do you, what's your take on that? Um, it's, you know, it's, it's good. I'm, I'm very glad that uh, everybody has moved on and made a lot of uh, name for themselves mm -hmm. in the Bollywood do they, industry. Do they still acknowledge things. you for it? or? It's like Unfortunately, it's no, they don't. They don't, yeah. <laughs> they don't and, and people don't even know how they started, yeah. really. But good for them. Mm -hmm. They're doing good. But I have to be honest, when I see the work the other the people ha are doing, yeah. it's not as up to par mm -hmm. as what we do in, in North America and stuff like that. But yeah. here, yeah. it moves. Good, good. Now, coming to again to your, to your core, which is hairstyling and everything. Do you come up with your own hairstyles or do you actually copy paste from somewhere of course inspiration comes in but do you have you actually created your own hairstyle yes I have mm -hmm. I have if actually in fact uh, recently one of the good ladies came in and one of the young girls she comes in and she tells me I want to do a hair tattoo mm -hmm. and she goes I want a unicorn or a peacock wow. okay and I'm looking at her going uh, okay I have I do hair tattoos yeah. uh, but I haven't done a unicorn or a peacock yeah. so the inspiration just comes in I mean I just go into the salon I was going to the back and I saw a peacock feather and I'm looking at it and I go hey you know what mm -hmm. this is what I'm gonna do so I go in and I, I shave the side off and I did the hair tattoo and I colored it so it actually looks like peacock feathers all over her hair what or who who has been your biggest inspiration in this field I don't know many fashion icons, I'll tell you honestly, so you can educate me on that as well. Um, as far as um, inspiration uh, in, in my field of fashion, yeah. I would say Tom Ford. Mm -hmm. Tom Ford is excellent. That mm -hmm. guy has got class. He's in his 50s if you look at him. Yeah. And his designing, his, his structure is just immaculate. Mm -hmm. So here's one. Uh, I'm more into grunge. I'm more into gothic. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, D square is someone else, which is really inspired. Mm -hmm. In the India Indian Bollywood scene, I have to say I am actually really inspired by this designer called Rohit K Verma. Rohit, okay. Rohit yeah. Verma. I, I, I have taken a selfie with him. He's a brilliant guy. Very down to earth. 
very down to earth and I find very unique very unique yeah very <laughs> unique but you know in this industry you yeah. have to be unique yeah. you have to push boundaries and yeah. I, you know what I just love his designs mm. especially for men because yeah. I remember I was in India just about uh, February this yeah. year yeah. and I bought one of his outfits yeah. and I wore it down in Canada at an event and at first mm -hmm. I had um, a lot of people looking at me because like, you know yeah, his yeah. his fashion is all the skirt kind yeah, of thing and yeah, fairing for yeah. guys and everything and I walked in in this event where there was hundreds of people and uh, I had people coming up to me and saying, whoa, that looks good, whoa, and you're rocking yeah. it. And then, of course, you get a few other yeah, people yeah. who well, look right. at you like, what the heck is that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's pushing boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the stressed look, the, the yeah, flares and everything. That's how you get noticed as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, why, why is it that most fashion icons are, are, are generally gays, you know? I have nothing against gays, but... No, no. Um, Generally, I would say that is what the assumption of a lot of people are, uh -huh. that they are gay. Everybody in the industry is gay. I mean, yeah. I have been asked a yeah. lot of things yeah. like that. And yeah. All of them are not, and yet a lot are. Now, you see, I find that to be creative, mm -hmm. you are just going on a whole different level. Mm -hmm. You're going on a whole different level. You're pushing boundaries. And it's just that I find that the fashion icons uh, who are the best right now are gay are gay and uh, that is because the creativity the the openness about things they're not yeah. hiding a lot of stuff you know yeah. and the pushing boundaries mm -hmm. and you know what nowadays pushing boundaries is what you need is the right way it's the right way good now tell me what's what's this rock star look of yours you know i mean torn jeans shoes your haircut, everything i mean and, and wherever you go out there you really put in that that's your end thing right now you know what it is, and I didn't realize myself. I, yeah. I, I remember I was coming down here and I said... I, I don't uh, want to see you with a guitar and you're there, you know. <laughs> <I'm> like, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I was like, it's funny because I said to my friends down there that yeah. I want to get my hair braided. Yeah. People go to Mexico and get it yeah. braided, but yeah. now guys don't do that. But yeah. if you go on Instagram and you check, dread, you check dreadlocks and everything, it's, it's the thing coming in. Yeah, yeah. And being in this industry, I want to push boundaries too yeah. because I don't want to be known as that old hairdresser. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I come here and I go get my day. Uh, no, my I must say you're aging gracefully, bro. Thank that's, you. That's, that's, that's Thank so you. Good. What's the secret to that, by the way? Um, secret to this is, I would say, just don't look at age as a as a number, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People I see when they say they get to an age of 40 or 30 or whatever. That's the end. That's the end. <laughs> That's what we yeah. perceived here. Yeah. That's what we perceived here. But when you go down there into the other world out there, mm -hmm. uh, when you're 70, mm. I mean, there was recently a model, uh, he's uh, Oriental, he's in his 70s. Mm -hmm. He's getting out there. He's becoming an icon to fashion wow. because he's looked after himself. Mm -hmm. He's got long gray hair. He walks the catwalks, you know what I mean? And that's coming in. Mm -hmm. But age is just a number. Honestly, it's if you think you are a certain age and that's how you got to morph yourself, then you're gone. Then you're gone. Then you're gone. Then you're gone. It's all in your head. You know what? And yeah. being out there in this industry, people come over to you. And if they look at you not with it, they're going to go to the young ones, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Like one of the old ladies, she's in her 60s, she comes up to me one day and she says to me, she says, why do you color your hair? Because my hair, I always yeah. color it blonde right yeah. now, right? And white or something mm -hmm. like that. So she goes, why do you do that? Why don't you just have a simple haircut and... Um, be uh, normal. To be, be normal, <laughs> as per se. So I looked at her and I said to her, I said, how old are you? She says, I'm 65. Mm. I said, yes, but I said, do you know I have clientele which is in the early teens mm -hmm. and I have clear clientele going to your age and older mm -hmm. and I said if I start looking old I'm going to lose out yes, 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 on the other yes, people yes. and it's not even that it's just that I love yeah. what I do I like what I do mm -hmm. and I really don't care about what people say <laughs> tell me about achievements and all that in the in your industry what what are some of the massive achievements you've got any awards I, I believe you're nominated for something recently. yes I was not I was no, nominated for multicultural award um, for BC and that, and that's for big. Canada and it's that's big, big yeah. that's big yeah. uh, I didn't make it uh, though but I was nominated mm. uh, because I was uh, tallied up and pushed up against people who have done massive degrees at UBC and that mm -hmm. but it was an honor it was an honor um, uh, and then uh, three years ago when I went back from here 
I got one of the top-notch uh, magazines in UK mm -hmm. uh, communicate with me and uh, they actually know me, uh, gave me an award for being the international hairstylist wow. and an icon. Yeah, wow, is, that's good yeah. stuff, good stuff bro. So generally you've told me you, know, you prefer working with singers than actors. Do you prefer working with men or women? Uh, both. both. Both because uh, both have their, uh, what you may call, uh, strengths. Strength. Uh, women is fantastic. I have to mention mm -hmm. one person I met just off mm -hmm. was Shreya Goshal. Mm -hmm. She's right oh, now lovely. in the North America yeah. thing doing. Yeah. Phenomenal girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome down to earth girl. The other person is Salim Suleiman. Mm -hmm. Legend. Uh, Salim mm -hmm. Merchant. Uh, phenomenal. I actually had gone for lunch with him and, yeah. and when you're shooting The Voice. Yeah. And he had invited us and uh, down to earth, really nice person. But yeah, working with uh, singers, I see a lot of uh, difference. Mm -hmm. People especially who've made it from down there yeah, and come yeah, up yeah, 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 yeah. and who have had no attachments into mm -hmm. the industry because the ones who have. Coming back to Kenya, are some of the fashion icons you recognize in Nairobi or Kenya? I, I have to say one fashion icon that I, I, was, I am bold over myself right yeah. now. Don't tell me your niece. <laughs> it's my niece. Here, right? It's <laughs> my niece. Aliza <laughs> Rajan. Oh my God. Now, yeah? <laughs> no, 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 I'm serious. I'm uh -huh. serious. Being in the industry myself, being out there, I yeah. come here to, uh, to Kenya and I am bold over. Oh. I have to be honest. I mean, yeah. I have heard. I know my niece talks about everything. Yeah. I, I keep, uh, I, I follow her on social media. Yeah. So when I, I came down, uh, I've been following Eliza Rajan yeah. on um, on the social media, uh -huh. and being my niece, I'm a little biased <laughs> about that. Of course, that yeah. no, maybe yeah. I'm happy she's got some of my genes yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, she is a fashion icon for Kenya. Uh -huh. I like it or not. And, yeah. I, and I'm not being biased on that, yeah. but as a teenage, as, as not a teenager now, but as a young person, a young entrepreneur yeah. woman. Yeah, she's there. I've seen her. She's very active. She's very active. She's yeah. a go-getter. Yeah. She's a go-getter. Yeah. And um, she, she is a fashion icon. I yeah. see her. I see people looking up to her. I see the way she dresses. She pushes boundaries, yeah. which I do like for mm -hmm, Kenya. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, the unfortunate part is that she's telling up against people who have been in this industry for years down here. So you're saying they bully her also? Well, I, I, I wouldn't want to quote to say they bully her, but of mm -hmm. course you know how Kenya yeah, works, you yeah. know how Africa works, yeah. that if you see a person emerging, yeah. they try to depth push, the, her, down, push yeah. her down yeah. or push yeah. him down. And I have seen that happening. Yeah. And you know, honestly, I feel there is room for everyone. There is room for everyone. The market there is, is everyone. Great. And people who are in the age of 50s year who have been doing it for years <laughs> need to let go, need to let go honestly <laughs> and let the young ones emerge. <laughs> I like that. People are here for 50 you know, plus. <laughs> let me tell you, uh, I come here and I look at pe a new people emerging yeah. here. Mm. I want to help them. You want to lift them. I mean, strong people lift others up. Lift them, them and you know what? Yeah. Build bridges. Don't mm. burn bridges mm. because you never know. Tomorrow she might be the icon here and yeah. nobody else yeah. Yeah. and then people want to tell you work together. So apart from Aliza Rajan, any other name that comes to your head? Unfortunately, I haven't seen no, many. Boy, see. <laughs> <laughs> I to, but I'd like to see a guy doing that yeah, too. Yeah, but in, yeah. you know, um, when I did um, Grass Sim International, yes, yes, uh, yes, when we I bought remember, did you remember? remember. That was an international, it's an international yeah. name. We had yeah. so many guys come up. Unfortunately, you just had once and it was gone. Okay. Yes. You left and all. I left then yeah. after that and then I got the rights for Canada and yeah. I, North America. I did not pursue it because I was coming and doing all yeah. of my other yeah. stuff. But we got a lot of people, yes, a lot of there guys. Were so many, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many. And I see the beautiful girls at um, Aliza Rajan's event this mm, time. Mm. And beautiful girls. Yeah. And that is what I like to see. This is, you know, this is of a future. Bring everyone here. up and everything. Yes. Yeah. And you know, that, that brings me, uh, uh, you know, generally in this industry, when you tell someone, oh, you know what, this makeup didn't look, it didn't suit you. Criticism. Didn't see, see, yeah. Criticism. They take it personally. Yes. How? Yes. I'm sure you must have had that. Yes, I've had that too. Here, I find in Kenya, criticism isn't taken at all properly. Yeah, it isn't appreciated. Everybody <laughs> wants to get ammunition out and shoot yeah. that person. Everyone wants to hear good stuff. Everybody wants to hear good stuff. But you know what, honestly, take criticism, whoever gets it, build up on it. And it's, you know what, you have to accept failures yeah. Yeah. to be able to make it better. Yeah. But people don't do that. 
people are comfortable in the zone and they don't want to come out. Comfortable, exactly. Well, let's hope we get out of that shell. And, you know, last but not least, 10, uh, 20 years plus you've been in this industry. Where do we see you more? What more is left, bro? Oh, you'll be seeing <laughs> a lot of me here yeah. and in Canada. <laughs> so we're expecting a lot of stuff coming in. Yes, a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, do something for Kenya, man. You know what? I would love to. Yeah. I would love to do a big, huge musical production mm -hmm. with the local artists. Mm -hmm. And international artists all combined together. Awesome. I awesome, would love awesome. to see that. Well, we wish you all the best for that. Zindagi TV will be there to support you. Thank and you. from our sponsors, thank you for coming. This is Mac Coffee. Thank you. You can enjoy <laughs> this talk and thank keep you, your buddy. creative juices flowing, buddy. Thanks. Arif Welji, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. And keep it